Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about two-dimensional arrays. I'm going to pull up my website here, javacjava.com. Click on the menu and select Java Tutorials. Go ahead and scroll down here to the two-dimensional arrays tutorial. A two-dimensional array is basically an array of single-dimensional arrays, an array of arrays per se. Now, arrays are objects, so when you declare an array, you are creating a reference variable. There are a few different ways to declare an array reference variable. The first one is basically you have the type, right? Um, which can be a primitive type, it can be an object type, either or. And then a reference variable here, and then two pairs of brackets, right? You can also do your type, then two pairs of brackets, then your reference variable. Or if you really want to, you know, get people irritated with you, you'll do a type and then a pair of brackets, then a reference variable and another pair of brackets. I'll demonstrate all three of these ways in our code here, right? So basically that's the three different ways that you can declare a uh, two-dimensional array. After we declare the reference variable, we then assign it to an array object of specified length. This is how this is done. We reference variable, then equals, and then new type and pair of brackets, and then the first pair of brackets, right? This is how many single dimensional arrays we're going to create. And the second pair of brackets, we're going to um, specify the length of the single dimensional arrays that we're creating, right? So here we go, we've got number array equals new int, right? Because we, this is an int data type here. And this is going to be two, um, single dimensional arrays that will each contain five elements, okay? Two five element arrays. We can do it all in one statement like this, int number array and then two pairs of brackets and then new int two, two and then five, right? And once we have created our array object, we can then initialize its elements. <laughs> we can directly initialize each element like this, right? So. I'm going to go ahead and initialize the first single dimensional array at index zero, right? So you'll notice these are, this is all zero, right? And then this is the, this next one is basically the single dimensional array with five elements. So at index zero, zero, we're going to set that equal to 10, 0, 1, 20, 0, 2, 30, 0, 3, 40, and 0, 4, 50, okay? Now we're going to initialize the second single dimensional array at index one. So you'll notice this is all one here, right? And then so at element zero there, I'm going to set that equal to 15, 125, 235, 345, and 455. Okay, now there are also there's also short, uh, shorthand syntax that allows us to declare and initialize an array object without using the new keyword. The values for the elements are enclosed in curly braces and separated with commas. The number of pairs of braces and the length of the array is determined by the number of values inside the braces, okay? So we're starting off with our data type and our array reference variable name, and then two sets of braces. Now in here, we've got our outer curly brace, or our opening curly brace and our closing curly brace on the outside, and then each one of the um, single dimensional arrays can be represented by enclosing their values in another set of braces, right? So here's our first single dimensional array and here's our second single dimensional array contained in the multi-dimensional array. So two groups of single dimensional arrays each with a length of five elements, okay? That's another way to do it. Now, it is also very common to initialize a multi-dimensional array using nested for statements. I like to use X and Y for the variable names because it allows me to visualize a row slash column being built on an X, Y axis. So anyway, we're going to set this uh, variable int i equal to 10 because I'm just going to initialize basically all of these arrays, three different arrays using three different initialization techniques, but they're going to contain the same values on both of the single, the two single dimensional arrays inside there. So we're going to start off with the first array, 
um, containing the value of 10. So we do that um, for x equals 2, right? And we're only going to have two single dimensional arrays in there. So we're going to start off with the, um, the one at 0 first, right? And then we're going to loop through the nested for five times, and we're going to be setting its value equal to i. Initially, i is 10, and then I do this in the next line, i plus equals 10. So that will basically fill up this, this first single dimensional array with 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, right? Then once it's, um, once it's looped through and filled that first single dimensional array, it'll fall out here and it'll say i equals 15, and it'll come around here and say, oh, we need to iterate through this outer for loop again. Come back in here, right? Now i in this particular case, is, or y is starting back off on zero, right? X is now equal to one. So we're gonna be loading up that, that second single dimensional array at, the, um, at index one here on, for this one. And then we're going to be able to be setting its initial value to 15, right? And then we're going to be looping through, and then it'll go 15 plus 10 is 25, 35, 45, and 55. Okay, so very common to use nested for statements to um, initialize arrays as well. Now let's talk about reading multidimensional arrays. Uh, it's very common to read a multidimensional array using nested for statements, right? So we know we have two... Um, single dimensional arrays in there and each one is a length of five so we'll nest this inner for there and it'll simply print out to the the console here in this particular case you know uh, this will be zero and the first iteration will be zero so the um, whatever values at zero zero right and then this will be zero one and zero two and zero three and zero four right and so it'll display all of the five elements of the first single dimensional array in the multi-dimensional array and then it'll go out to the second single dimensional array out there and loop through five times to display its value. Now a, a better method is to read a multi-dimensional array using nested enhanced for statements, right? And if you're not sure what an enhanced for statement is, I highly recommend you watch my tutorial on the enhanced for statement. It'll clear a lot of this up, okay? So we don't, the advantage of this is we don't have to know how, well, the size of our um, multidimensional array. We don't know how, have to know how many arrays of single um, dimensional arrays are contained in it, or we don't have, and we don't have to know how long each single dimensional array actually is. So we can basically do in the outer um, enhanced for, right? number is our array right and number is of course a you know a, a two there's two of them up here right so but the first um the first elements contain uh not actual int values they contain an int array so we have to say int array x right and then we're just setting that as to whatever you know it's gonna iterate through on that now x is now contains an array right and then we iterate then we set this variable y here right event data type and we iterate through the x arrays right and we just simply display y y every iteration y gets assigned a value of the current element that it's looping through falls back out of there and then assigns um for the second integer for the second um single dimensional array it assigns that to x here too and then it loops through that again so if you don't understand this, definitely go through my enhanced for um, tutorial there. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about it because that was, you know, like a 10-minute tutorial in itself there. So that's kind of the abridged Cliff Notes version of that. So let's go ahead and come down here to the code, and let's actually do exactly what we did up there. Let's go ahead and, and make those arrays and read them. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that, Control-C to copy, and which I already did. And I'm going to move the browser off screen. I have a shortcut to the command prompt down here on my desktop. If you, you can create one real quick if you don't have one by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, then CMD, and then next and finish. And it's just that easy. So we're going to open up the command prompt, type in Java C. Java C is the Java compiler. Go ahead and press enter. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't, if you get like an error message, then go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You'll want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing on. 
CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory backslash, tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a folder called Java using the MD command. Now, I already have it, so it's going to tell me it exists, but if you don't have it, I'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to change directory to the Java folder, and then I'm going to make another directory, and I'm just going to call this 2Array, and we'll just uh, change directories to the 2Array folder, and then I'm going to uh, notepad 2Array.java. 2Array.java is going to be our source code file name or otherwise known as our compilation unit. I'm going to press enter on that, create this file. Control V will paste all this stuff in or you could right click and select paste. Okay. So here's what we got. We got our main method entry point right here. And then I'm going to be declaring array one, all right, using the uh, pairs of brackets after the array name there, right? And then I'm gonna initialize array one to a new object or new multi-array object here right of int type and it's going to have two single dimensional arrays those single dimensional arrays are going to have five elements each right so there's one initializing part right and then array two and array three i'm initializing them and declaring them differently so now we can um definitely initialize these one by one which what which is what i've done here so in the first um the first single dimensional array, which is at uh, index zero, right? I'm setting this equal to 10, exactly what we talked about up there, right? I don't need to spend too much time. Here's the second single dimensional array. I'm um, initializing its five elements to these values. Now here's another example of how we can do this here, right? Now the int, and then I put the, um, the pair of braces in front of the variable name over here as opposed to behind it up there. And then we can just basically you know, load it up with what I talked about in the tutorial up there, right? And here's array three, and where I've done int, and then here's a pair of braces over here, your reference variable name, and a pair of braces over here, equals new int two five, right? And then basically everything that I talked about there, we're just loading this up, um, loading these arrays up. So this is three different ways to declare arrays, and three different ways to initialize arrays. All right, now we're going to read the arrays now. So I'm just gonna display reading array one to the console. And pretty much exactly like what I described up there, the first time I'm gonna use just an ordinary four, nested for loops, actually, you know, setting um, just a standard for loops nested. And then I'm just gonna display some values to the console there as we go ahead and reiterate through the arrays, right? And then, um, and of course, this we're just iterating through array one here on this standard for loop. So now, then I will display to the console reading array two, and we do we don't need to know the array length to read an array using the enhanced for loop, right? Up here, I had to know it was two and five, right? Now, obtaining the length on this is just um, I didn't really want to do that there because I really like using the enhanced for loops once you get the hang of them there. Right, so we'll be iterating through the array two uh, multi-dimensional array down here, and this works exactly like what I told you up there, right? If you understand this, then great. If not, watch my tutorial on the enhanced for loop. Okay, and then I use the enhanced for loop again to read, um, actually this should be array three. Got a typo up there, right? Because we're actually reading array three. So let me make a note to fix that. <laughs> All right, and let's go ahead and save this out and run it. Compile it and run it. Compile a two array.java and Java two arrays. Strip that off there. Okay, so reading array one, I actually you know displayed in just for grins and giggles, you know element plus the element of the you know the array, right? And then these those are the values of the single dimensional arrays. So the single dimensional array at element zero, here's its values, and the single dimensional array at element one, these are its values right there. And then I just didn't do that for the other two, but anyway, so reading array two, right? We've got these values in the, and those values and reading array three, on one by me, okay? So um, that pretty much, I think I'll do it. Let's go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. I'm gonna leave you with some final thoughts here. Multi-dimensional arrays are quite common. I personally have created numerous Android word search apps that utilize multi-dimensional arrays extensively. 
If you struggle with understanding how the enhanced for statement works, then you should review my tutorial on the enhanced for statement. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.